Lengthen from the shoulders to the elbows and then bring your hands together in front of your chest. Feel the area around the abdomen and bring the abdomen up and in. So up as if you were zipping up a pair of jeans and back into the spine. And then open the chest wider and lengthen the elbows down. You can start releasing the facial muscles and the tension around the eyelids, the jaw, the tongue in your mouth. And last of all, close your eyes. And once you have your eyes closed, keep the gaze at eye level. Feel lightness around the neck area and just as if you were switching off the lights, switch off the trapezius. The trapezius are right where the shoulders meet with the neck. So switch off those muscles and let the shoulders release down. Take a deeper inhalation than before. And then as you open your mouth, exhale and let's chant. Inhale and lift the chest. And then bring your gaze down, bring your head down. Keep the chest lifted though, and then drop the hands onto the thighs. Lift your head and slowly, slowly open your eyes. Great. Okay, let's begin. So we have been, for those of you who weren't here this week, we have been working on something very creative. <laughs> um, you've got to imagine that you have the armpit split in two halves. The top half will extend the arm up to the elbow. So the top half of your armpit will also help you grip the salt and pepper muscles, which is the triceps basically. And then from the top, bottom half of the armpit, we will be drawing down towards the ribs. This action, it's just to uh, internally draw the, um, the arm back into the socket, but doesn't mean that we have to lower down the chest or com um, compact ourselves. Um, we will be compacting ourselves as it has been the, the topic of the week. But as we extend and we draw the half, bottom half of the armpit down towards the ribs, we will actually be able to lengthen the spine some more. It's very ironic, but that's the, things that that's the thing that happens. Let's start in all fours. So that image of lengthening down from the top half of the armpit to um, the elbow is the one that we're going to work on today, uh, at this moment, I mean. If you have, um, if your knees are not happy with being in all fours for a little while on the mat, just have a blanket or a cushion or something extra to support your knees. We will not be here for a long time, but um, still to avoid discomfort, so have the two hands shoulder width apart with the fingers facing forwards, especially make the two indexes parallel to one another. And then uh, push your, the heels of your hands down and activate your arms in such a way that the top half of your armpit, it's cutting down to the elbows. So the elbows become open and the upper arm muscles are really tense. They are contracting. We are pushing the hands down and then extending the arms fully. The grip of the muscles into the bone is happening now. And then last of all, just 
to allow the spine to grow a little longer, we will withdraw the bottom half of the armpit back to the ribs. Bottom half of the armpit to the ribs and then look up, look straight ahead. Arms are super strongly working and as are the um, muscles around the ribs and shoulder blades. And then release and we, it's a very subtle action though. We will do exactly the same, but with the hands a little closer to my knees. That means that still the fingers are facing forwards, but my shoulders will be almost aligned to the fingertips. So being all fours, legs are hip width apart. I am still, um, if you want to use that blanket for your knees, but there is a little bit more of action on the wrists. And to avoid overloading those wrists, go to the way, go with the weight to the knuckles and fingertips, and then extend from the top half of the armpit to the elbow. Push the floor down, push the floor down with the knuckles and with the fingertips. And then last of all, half, uh, bottom half of the armpit down towards my uh, ribs and waist, and then look straight ahead, elongate your spine, sitting bones and tailbone go in one direction and the head going in the opposite direction. And then come back. Again, same thing. This time again, the palms will be right underneath the shoulders, but my fingers will be facing the knees. So still with the hands wide open, still with the indexes parallel to the edges of the mat, hopefully you will be able to align the um, creases of your wrists to the top edge of the mat. So, Sarah, um, if this is too much for the wrists, take a break, okay? We are just warming them up um, for what's coming. <laughs> so really, um, Try to bring the hands as parallel to the top edges of the mat, hands, um, heels of the hands right under the shoulders. And one more time, push from the armpits to the elbows so that you are pushing the hands down. Thumbs are pressing strongly down, but also press with the little fingers. Little fingers, thumbs, and webbing between the thumb and index. Then, Bottom of the armpit to the waist and extend the spine more. Roll the shoulders away from your ears. Look straight ahead. Grip the upper arm muscles. You really need to feel that the triceps are glued, super glued to the bone. Okay, come back to the center or come back to a sitting position. The last one of these we are going to keep the arms straight and make a circle. So the body will rotate around or spin around the two wrists. I'll show you, I'll show you from the front. You will be, uh, you'll be able to see it better if I show you from the front. The two hands are shoulder width apart under the shoulders, but I will go to the right. So um, turning clockwise, and trying to press on the whole range of the hand, the whole edges. So the, the circle has to be marked by the rotation of the wrist and shoulders. The weight is shifting from left to right. Let's do three clockwise and three counterclockwise and we're done. We're done with the warming up. <laughs> Fingers. Facing forwards, the two indexes are parallel. So that may take your hands a little bit outwards, yeah? Push the floor down, be in all fours. Lift the abdomen up and then take your, your weight over to the right and you will be on the inside of your left hand, uh, sorry, right hand and, sorry, if you're going to the right, you're in the inside of the left hand, outside of the right hand. And then go forwards, turn out to the left and down and back. One more time, circle with the elbows locked. 
So basically what we are teaching our wrists is that they are capable of loading weight and bearing weight in difficult positions. The third one, once you've finished, switch sides and start doing it from left to right. Massage the whole circumference of your palm, but also lock your elbows and extend from the armpits to the elbows. Come back up. Right. So just as we have done all week, extend now from there. If you're not comfortable sitting on your heels, you can sit cross legs or you can sit on the bolster. <clears throat> we are going to be doing extensions of the hands and arms forwards and up. So basically extend the two hands forwards, the two arms forwards, and again, from the top half of your armpit towards your um, elbow and from the bottom half of the armpit to the ribs. Notice how the spine grows when you are doing that action, when you are withdrawing the armpit to the um, waist. And then from there, interlace your fingers with the right little finger at the bottom, turn the palms away from you and lift up, lift up, lift up, lift up. Okay. Shall we do it? Sorry, for those who were doing extra work. Extend the arms in front of you. Grip the armpits to the elbows. Extend and grip up, grip up. So now reattach from armpit to the waist. Roll the shoulders down, lift the abdomen, interlace the hands right to the pit. Turn the palms away from you. Roll the shoulders down and now try to lift, lift from the waist. Forget about lifting the ribs or sorry, the, the wrists or the, the elbows. Lift from the waist, lift from the shoulder blades, lift from your ribs, lift the elbows, lift everything else. Now from there, pretend the armpits are cut in half and extend the top half up and extend the top, the bottom half down. Still with your wrists extending to the sky, lengthen the sides of the body and then inhale, come back down. Do the same action with the fingers interlaced behind you. So now the left little finger will be at the bottom, open the shoulders, extend the arms, so now we are not turning the palms away. The palms are facing my buttocks. And I want to separate the shoulder blades without separating your fingers. Separate the shoulder blades. And now extend from the armpits to the elbows. Grip the upper arm muscles to the bone. Lengthen the shoulders away from your neck. Keep the head in line and Lift the abdomen, pull the belly button back, belly button back, belly button back. Now, we're going to slightly lean forwards, wherever you are, you can slightly lean forwards and start lifting your arms. Lift from the armpit to the elbow. Lift the wrists a little higher. Roll the shoulders down, separate the shoulder blades. Inhale, come back up, lower the arms, undo the interlacing, and you can now shake your wrists and shake your fingers. So we're going to now come into um, uh, downward dog. So this downward dog will be in three different, uh, three different variations of downward dog with the arms. So the first downward dog our classical downward dog, hands uh, facing forwards with the two indexes parallel. The second one will be with the palms facing out, so the fingers will be outside the edges of the mat. And the last one will be with the palms facing the knees. With this one, in most cases, 
we don't get a very efficient downward dog. So don't worry. The good thing is that we can lose our fear of lifting up and really using those muscles to, um, to come up. Okay, downward facing dog. I'll change sides. We can work on the arms and then worry about the legs. So when you come up, come up with your legs bent. Have the hands hip width, sorry, so shoulder width apart. Indexes <clears throat> parallel to one another, spread the palms and the fingers, and then turn the toes under and come up, still with your legs slightly bent. Lengthen from the uh, top arm of the armpit down to the elbows. And then see if you can lift the elbow joints away from the floor. Elbow joints are lifting away from the floor without lifting the hands. The hands are receiving weight, but I want the legs to be working. So send more weight back to the legs. When you're ready, start lifting your uh, knees and thighs and extend from the bottom half of the armpit to the buttocks and send the buttocks to the wall behind you. Stay there for a moment. Lifting the thighs and knees, opening the back of the knees. Feel the grip of the outer upper arm muscles to the bone. Feel that your triceps are really working to avoid touching the mat. So you really want those arms, those upper arms and elbows away and away and away and away from your mat. Great. And now you can come back down onto your hands and knees. Turning the palms. So the tendency in this, in this one is we tend to think that the fingers have to be shoulder width. And then I'm exaggerating, but we, we start the downward dog with very, very, very narrow um, arms. So take your hands wider than you think so, as, so that the heel of the palm is aligned to the L, uh, to their shoulder, sorry. The heel of your palm. So basically for many of us, the palms will be touching um, the outer edges of the mat, depending on the model of your yoga mat, of course. But for many of us, that means that my hands, my fingertips are facing outside the mat. So this time around, try to make the two thumbs vertical. Try to make the two thumbs parallel to one another. And it is very easy for us to rotate the upper arms in this pose because the, the hand invites the arm to turn. From there, come up. Come up into downward dog, same as before. Activate the bottom half of the upper arm, sorry, bottom half of the armpit, back to the waist. Bottom half, uh, Martin, you need your hands wider. If you are broader across the back, you will need the hands a little wider than I've just said. Sarah, again, you can take as many breaks as you need. And if you want to go on doing downward dogs with the classical variation, uh, you're invited to. <laughs> and then bring yourselves back down. Last one, <laughs> the one we are all uh, waiting for. Turn the palms. Wherever you reach is fine. The, the emphasis has to be on the heel of the palm. Heel of the hand and um, the pressure of the thumbs and indexes. So let's turn the palm so that you are aligning the wrists to the top edge of the mat and then come up and take the body weight away from the ribs, uh, away from the wrists. Pushing more strongly on the thumb and indexes, and then taking the bottom half of the armpit back towards the tailbone. Bottom half, back, back, back. Emma, are you all right? The head will never go back as, as we do normally, because the body is not designed to, to allow that uh, rotation. But try to do this without lifting the heel of the palms. Extend the spine, send the body weight back to the legs. 
You may also be feeling that the hands want to open out to the sides. You can also do it. You don't have to do the 90 degree angle. That's it. Now, okay, send the chest to the thighs, chest to thighs, chest to thighs. That's it. And then come back down. Okay. Before we carry on with all this arm and, um, and uh, wrist work, take, like, make a pancake with the two hands. Take the left hand to your right hand, also catching the thumb, and pull down or push the hand down. The elbow and the upper arm are not moving, but if I am at a right angle here, I want that hand to be lower down. And I am using the natural pressure of my own body just to go down. And now see if you can from here, extend from the right upper arm, from the right armpit to the right upper arm and lift your hand up as you keep pushing down. So resist. And release, other side. So now the right hand is pushing onto the uh, left hand, thumbs and all, and fix the elbow, make a right angle, and then push down. Push strongly down, but also gently. Lift the chest, and now from the top half of your armpit to the elbow, grip and push, so that the resistance is stronger and then release okay prasarita padottanasana kate let me know if you need to rest um to avoid uh, going down with your head how are you feeling to do a lot of um inversions I don't think I want to go, um, you know, handstand, headstand, but I'm all right down with dog. I think it's still a little bit tender. Okay. All right. So Prasarita Padottanasana is preparation for headstand. So what we're going to do, what you can do is put a pile of bricks for your head or a chair for your head. Um, I will show you from the front and then we will do it. I'll show you from the side so you can see the work of the arms. We will go down. Some of us may need a couple of bricks here. And then we will bend the elbows and take the hands. So my hands are at the same level with my feet. This can happen with the hands on bricks as well. And it doesn't mean that you need to have the head on the ground. Head doesn't have to go on the ground. It is simply pushing down. Um, we will do that and work we will come back up and then instead of having the hands facing forward, we will take the hands the other way. So turning, turning the palms towards the back wall and trying to do the same work. It is of course more um, demanding to do it with the hands facing away. You can do this with hands on bricks and if you have your period, or you're not feeling 100%, Karen, if you, if you may have a headache, etc., you can have support for your head. The support for the head can be a couple of foam pads, etc. Um, otherwise, head hanging is fine. We are preparing for inversion, so if the head is uh, dangling there, <laughs> that's fine. Lengthen. Um, the legs, so the legs need to be wide, come up, come up. Legs have to be wide and make sure that they, the two feet are parallel to one another. Now pull the inner thighs to the inner knees, inner knees to inner arches. So really you have to lengthen the inner legs more than the outer legs and then grip the outer hips in. Grip the outer hips in. Inhale, lift your arms up above your head and already work on the top half of your armpit going to the elbows. The bottom half of your armpit going to the waist. And then go down, hands on bricks. To begin with the hands are right under the shoulders. Flatten the palms, 
either on the bricks or on the blocks or wherever you have them, maybe on the ground too. And then start walking your hands so they come at the same, the heels of the hands will be at the same level as your heels of the feet. The hands should be at um, shoulder width, shoulder width apart. Then activate the top half of the armpit to the elbow. So grip the upper arms. Top half of the armpit to the elbow, grip the upper arms and bend the elbows. From the bottom half of the armpit, slide towards your waist. Slide towards your waist and now take your dorsal spine, thoracic spine, down. Thoracic spine down to meet your elbows. The center of your spine, center of your chest, want to go to the elbows. Lengthen from the armpits to the waist and see how long the spine becomes. Carry on pulling up the knees and thighs. Pull up the knees and thighs so you can bring your elbows in. Turn. Yes, that's it. And now, everybody, lift your shoulders away from your neck. Shoulders away from your neck. Okay, have your hands walk back to level with the shoulders, the hands or the hands and the bricks. Inhale and come back up. So this second time around, we will do it so that we can go down with the palms facing away from the toes. Okay, lift your arms up above your head. Bring your body down, concave your back. And already, if you even if you have bricks, you can have the palms facing back. Walk with your fingers in the direction of the back wall and then bend your elbows and then bring your body down lower. You can have hands on bricks to push the heels of the hands more strongly down on this support, pull up the knees and thighs, bend the elbows, squeeze the elbows in and lengthen from armpit to elbow. Lengthen from armpit to elbow. Sarah, could you walk your hands even more back? That's it. And Anne, could you bring the bricks a little bit further back? There you go. Now bend your elbows. Yes, take your bodies down, take your head down, let the head relax, let the neck and head relax. The crown of the head should be facing the floor. Lift the inner thighs, lift the inner knees, open the back of the knees, open the back of the knees. And then grip your hips, walk your hands back towards the front end of the mat. Inhale, bring your hands to the hips and come back up. Heels and toes and heels and toes and heels and toes. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Before we do Shishasana, we're going to do Shishasana too. Before we do Shishasana, I would like us to do a handstand. If you're not going into handstand, you will do Supta handstand, which is exactly the same as if I am lying on the ground for Shavasana, but pretending we are doing a handstand. You have to have the hands against the wall or the hands on bricks so that, let me show you. Um, let's pretend that this is the wall and I will show you with only one hand. So I will go down. This is for those of us who are not going to go upside down, okay? You lie on the mat and have the, the wall over your head, the wall or bricks, bricks wrapped up with your yoga mat so they're not going anywhere. And then let's pretend that this is my wall. We will take, extend the hand into the wall so the heel of the hand is pushing into it. Push the heel of the hand, 
into the skirting board. The fingers are completely straight and the heel of the hand. So we've got to really elongate from the top half of the armpit to the elbow and beyond. Pushing the hand. This is for those people who are not going to go into handstand. If you want to try to do the kicking only, you can do the kicking in the center of your room and you don't need to have a mat against the wall. So you have walk in, walk in, walk in and lift. Walk in, walk in and kick. So you can try that six times, three with each leg. Okay, try the supta version, try the kicking up and those of you who are willing to kick up into headstand or uh, handstand, you will do it once like that, once like that and once like that. I know, you can put a bolster for your head if you're concerned about the last one. The last one can also be avoided, be avoided and you can do two of these with the hands out. Hands outwards is easy. It's the natural thing, the thing that we all want to do. Hands out and hands forwards, the classical variation, and then hands back. You really have to strengthen those fingers, strengthen the, um, the wrists and then come up. It is a little bit scary to do it with the fingers facing back, but if you have a bolster there, you can manage. That's it, that's it, that's it. Kate, try to grip the upper arm muscles to the bone and send the elbows down. Imagine that I am here with my two hands pushing into the elbows and taking them down. That's it. Great, Anne, walk in a little more, Anne. Walk in a little more, that's it. Nearer the wall. Lock your elbows. Anyone who's trying it, lock your elbows as you come up. When you're kicking, check that there is no dog behind you. Okay, once you have tried a couple of times or six times for each leg or three times for each leg, have a rest. And Emma, I, I just, I'm aware that I may not be, oh yes, you were doing supta. Okay, great. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, I can see that. Uh, roll over onto the right hand side. And if you want to try with assistance, you can ask Chris. I am asking Chris <laughs> to come and assist you. Um, you lift one leg and hop with the other. Lift one leg and Chris will catch that leg. Only if you're okay with that. So lift your leg there, that's it. And now push her to the wall, Chris. Now lift the sitting bones and look into your belly button, look into your belly button, head to the belly button. Look in, look in, look in, look in, look into the table. Tuck your chin in, tuck your chin in, and yes, that's it. Lock your elbows. Well done. Whenever you're ready, Chris can let go of you. <laughs> Otherwise he was hanging you there forever. <laughs> well done. Okay. So now, um, those of us who are going into Shishasana, We'll try the following. You can, of course, go against the wall. And I will show you from the side so you can see better. You can go against the wall. You will have your classical headstand preparation. Now, if you want to do your traditional headstand, I would suggest that before you do your traditional headstand, you come into this and this one cage you can try. So basically going into a squatting action um, with the hands underneath or the fingers underneath your support and then going into a squatting action and coming down and up. So basically, 
um, pretending that you're going into a um, roly-poly, that you're going to do a roly-poly. So squat, have your hands more or less like we tried in crow pose, but pretend that you're falling from crow pose and then whoop and come back up. You don't have to do this a million times, just emphasis in the strength of the abdomen and the legs, okay? You don't really want to overdo it with the head. And you can also have a foam pad for your head so that it's not that low. Uh, this is for those of us who are not going to try um, the uh, Shushasana 2. So Shushasana 2, you put your two hands, put your head. Again, as I said before, you can have the um, wall behind you. And we're going to try once here. So the elbows are at the right angle, um, forearms and arms, etc. And then we'll come back down, do that squatting action again. And then we'll do it with the hands facing back. So it's not that bad when you're there. It's not that bad. As a matter of fact, it's even, um, uh, we take up even more surface, actually, if you think about it. Again, as I said before, you can have the wall behind you. And if you are concerned about balance, neck, etc., go into the, the classical shushasana, classical interlaced fingers, etc. But first try that one I was showing earlier of squatting, coming up. And so pitch where you can do this. Uh, if, you, if your knees will not bend that long, that low, you do it as if you were going to do a roly poly, do it from up there and come back down. Yeah? Um, Sarah, that's beautiful. You need to, to squeeze your elbows in more. Curse you there. Well done. Pancho, well done. <laughs> that's it, Caroline. Now, and, and everyone who's there already, shoulders away from, shoulders away from the floor, shoulders away from the floor. Armpits to elbows. Martin, you need your hands further away from you. Hands almost near the knees. Janine, lengthen the back of the neck. Lengthen the back of the neck to the floor. Great, that's it. You need the hands a little bit further away, Janine. Further away from the radiator, towards your knees. Squeeze your elbows in if you are in Shushasana 2 or if you are trying it. Chris, don't stay there too long. Don't get too tired. <laughs> That's it, Anne. Well done. You're there. Okay. Caroline, all eyes on you. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, go. Try it. Kate, have you tried that one? It's a nice extension of the forearm. So from here, you will have to lift your buttocks more, take your head down and lift, and then push your arms more. So it's more of a work of the wrists. Yes. Squeeze your elbows in when you go. Caroline, abdomen, <laughs> grip your hips and dive there well oops <laughs> roly-poly well done there you are doing nira lamba which is the the next one we're going to do <laughs> the next one we're going to do what about you put your head and then your hands put your head down and then put your hands down forget about the hands bring your head down like a child's pose yes and then put your hands and then go up from there. Those of you who have done all the variations, there you go, look at that. Mind your neck though. Um, that's it, curse, now squeeze your elbows in.
That's it, Caroline. You're there. You're there. You're there. You are there. Lift your shoulders. Okay. Karen and everybody who has been there for like two hours and a half, you can bring your legs down and rest in Adha Mukha Varasana, child's pose. Well done, Chris. Right. Okay. We've done a lot of work of warming up. Believe it or not, all that was warm up. <laughs> uh, we will have now to include a chair in, the, um, in our practice and also the belt. So I am folding the blanket and placing it on top of the backrest of the chair. The chair is coming in. And the idea, I keep lo losing the focus. The idea is for, um, when I have the belt, I will have the belt around the elbow, the elbow joint and not um, above or below. And the loop will be as wide as my shoulders. So to begin with the shoulders, the elbows and the wrist will be at the same level. First, we will do something like Ardha Uttanasana, like we did yesterday, um, Ardha Uttanasana going over that backrest of the chair with the hands facing forwards, and then we will turn the hands and make the wrists face forward. So at first I'm leaning on the chair seat and I will be doing that and then turning the hands, uh, my belt is loosening. So first I will lean on the chair, my hands will be facing forwards, then the hands will be facing back. And then I will bend the elbows just as we did. This will feel like a walk in the park after so much balancing. So the hands will come a little bit further back into the chair and I will bend the elbows and see if I can go a little lower down, still with the wrists on the, on the seat. Um, Sarah, you can have a wedge for your wrists if this is too much. You can have a tea towel or something for your wrists so you're still pressing onto something. And then we will come into Mayurasana, which is the peacock pose. I hope you remember that. Um, Mayurasana, well, I'll show you later. Let's take it one step at a time. So have the belt around your elbow joints. And then you can, of course, um, face the backrest of the chair. The two feet are together, unless you have lumbar, pine, lumbar spine pain, in which case turn the, toes out, uh, turn the toes in and heels out. Facing forwards with your fingers, lean on the chair and lift your abdomen away from the backrest. Lift your abdomen, you're barely touching the backrest. Your, your arms are really firm. You are extending from the top half of your armpits down towards the elbows and from the elbows down towards the wrists. The fingers can be gripping the edges of the chair. Lengthen the spine by squeezing the, uh, bottom, uh, the bottom armpit to the waist. Lengthen the spine and look up. This is Uttanasana, halfway lifting the thighs and the knees, lifting the abdomen. So you're using the chair as a measuring tape. You don't really want to be loading on it. The legs are doing the work, the um, abdomen is doing the work, and we are using the chair just as guidelines, not as an actual prop. So grip the outer hips, revolve the shoulders away from your neck, Inhale, push the upper arms down to the seat and come back up, arms over your head. Now we're going to come down again. This time around the palms will be uh, with the wrist facing forwards and fingers facing to your kneecaps. So lift your arms, come down halfway through, 
Make your legs really strong. And now again, align your hands to the edge of the chair. Can you align the wrists to the edge of the chair? If you feel that the belt has, um, needs a little adjustment, simply pull from the tail and go back into it. Uh, in my case, when I turn the arms in, the elbows um, go more together. So now again, imagine the chair is not there, but you still need to recruit the muscles of your abdomen to lift the belly button away and grip the hips so that if the chair disappears, I can still stay in this position and extend the fingers, extend the knuckles. Imagine the fingers, the phalanges are like caterpillars. You've got to really reach the backrest with your fingernails. Roll the shoulders back and down and open the chest. And then separate your shoulder blades. Separate your shoulder blades away from your spine. So we are pushing the seat of the chair down and we are squeezing the armpits to the waist. Lengthen the neck, lengthen the spine, the spine and then bring the shoulder blades away from one another. There's a slight hollowing of the chest happening at this point. Inhale, lighten up on the hands, lift yourselves up and then you can shake your arms, take them off the belt if needed. Now, in the meantime, I will show you what we're going to do. Those of you who have chairs that are not yoga chairs, you've got to gauge because it, you don't really want to ruin your furniture. <laughs> We're going to hang on to the chair. Now the chair has become a prop. So what I will do is I need to make sure that my hip bones can go over the chair. If your chair has a, a tall backrest, you may need um, to stand on bricks. And likewise, if the chair is too short, you may need bricks for the legs of the chair. I hope that makes sense. So then we will take the hands, first of all, as they were a moment ago, elbows towards my waist and lengthening the arms back. So I start here, but then I will bring the hands more to the center of the chair, elbows to my waist, elbows down. This is like a Chaturanga Dandasana, but with the hands facing away. From here, can I extend one leg? Can I extend the other leg? Here's where we gauge the durability of the chair. And then you have to really contract your abdomen, really contract your spine, and then balance there. So you really want to balance pushing the chair away from you. You want to have the legs a tiny bit higher than your torso and separate your shoulder blades away from one another. Then one leg down, the other leg down with control. So there is a lot of pressure around the abdomen. And if you need to fold the blanket one more time, you're allowed to do that. Of course, put two blankets, put the yoga mat, etc. You need to bend the elbows. Okay, yeah, that's it. Now lift your feet. There you go. There you go. So let us all start. As I was saying before, if your chair is too short, you need to put um bricks under the um legs of the chair if your chair backrest is, is too tall you need to stand yourselves up on stilt okay i have a specifically designed yoga chair for dwarfs so my measure is perfect i just need a little blanket because it's harsh otherwise let's go forward go forward and First of all, hands are right at the edge of the seat. Then from here, walk your hands a little bit back to the center of the chair and bend the elbows to the waist. So elbows in, 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 separate your shoulder blades. Elbows in, separate your shoulder blades. You're already lightening the chest 
and the pubic bone onto the chair. The pubic bone is underneath the chair and the hip bones are over the, the backrest. Now, walk back one leg at a time to assess the durability of the chair and then lift one leg at a time to uh, major asana. So push from the bottom armpit to the waist and from the top armpit to the elbow. Lengthen the legs, lighten yourselves onto the chair and then come back down. That's it, that's it. Open the back of the knees. That's it, Karen, you're there, you're there. Bend the elbows and lift. Chris and Anne, do you think the chairs will give in? No, they won't, but um, they are, okay, okay, they tilt, okay. Don't worry, we will, t we will try it on the ground in a moment. Um, those of us who are finding this, there you go, Karen, lift your legs. There you go, lift the legs up, lift the legs up. Open the back of the knees. Well done. Now, if you were finding this easy, Bye, see you later. If you were finding it easy, you can wrap the belt tighter and get the two forearms and the two uh, outer edges of the hands together and try again. So this is the classical version of the pose, yeah? With the two forearms, two hands together. Um, you can have the belt there. Um, as extra bit of prop. So spreading all the fingers, spreading the palms, and then going over, lifting one leg, lifting the other leg, and going into the position, wide arms and palms, but they are actually touching the forearms. Um, that, that's it, that's it, that's it. Let me see. You don't have to bring the hands so far back, Emma. Otherwise the chair may fold. <laughs> That's it, Kate. That's it. Now look up and push from the elbows. Sorry, from the armpit to the elbow, from the armpit to the way. Yes. Well done, Janine. Caroline, lift. I think, yes, May, maybe move the hands a little bit further forward. Well done, Chris, making his own props. There you go. Caroline, I would say, bring your chair closer to the wall so you can climb the wall and then let go of it. Climb into the wall and then let go of it. You've got to put your pubic bone underneath and the hip bones on top. Right. There, there you go. Now open the back of the knees. Open the back of the knees. Push from the armpits to the ribs. Yes. Well done. Well done, everybody. Well done for following me into this craziness. <laughs> because that wasn't enough. Forget about the chair. And bring two bricks and four foam pads. We're not going to do shoulder stand, by the way. Not yet. So. The belt is still required. Four foam pads, two bricks. Of course, the distance will depend on your own length. This is how we, we're going to do it. I mean, Chris was very smart in that he brought the bolster and he was doing it on top of the bolster. 
with the body lying on it and then doing uh, like a reverse chaturanga dandasana lifting um, the legs higher than the than the um, spine that is a very good way of doing it you can do that repeat it with a lot of support and if you want to work on the core and on the um, upper arms we will take the belt again we will not use the arms together because uh, I want the bricks kind of as wide as the shoulders so still using the belt just as I was recovering from my bruises around the elbows we're doing them again so um, the hands will be half way on the bricks half way on the uh, floor so that's how I want to take the heels of the hands the bricks will be like this and I will be pushing the heel of the hand on the brick and the uh, fingers or the fingertips onto the floor so we will take heels of the hands um, on and then Again, as I said before, you may need to move the bricks back, the, the foam pads back. So first we bend the elbows and take the body weight. We need to lighten up on the belt, otherwise we'll have a bruise. Find your blocks, find your blocks and then stay there. Stay there, stay there. You may be able to lift your legs. I'm not going to try it because I know I cannot. <laughs> My core is not strong enough. Um, so you, if you want to try, by all means, Kate, be careful. I know you may be able to mind your teeth, Kate. <laughs> so let's start all together. Have the belt as wide as your shoulders and or a little bit narrower if you want, but they are around the elbow joint. The belt is around the elbow joint. Then being all fours, and take your hands to face back. The hands are facing the kneecaps and the fingertips are touching the floor, but the heels of the hands are pressing against the bricks. You need to make your little finger edge side of the hand strong. Before we do anything else, measure that you have your buttocks and the knees at the same level and that you are touching the blocks with your feet. That will be more or less the measurements. Now, bend the elbows to your waist. Bend the elbows and lean on that upper arm and belt joint. Then lift one foot and place it on the brick. Lift the other foot and place it on the brick. Open the back of the knees, be light on the toes. Lean forwards, lean forwards more. Chest lower than your legs. Bring the chest lower than your legs. You've got to go over those elbows. Elbows on the, on the waist, elbows on the waist. Well done. Okay, try once more so I can see you. <laughs> Take, take um, a moment to rest. Chris, I still can see you back there. I can see that you're trying to balance. Chris is climbing up the wall. You can't stop yourself, can you? <laughs> Going further and further and further. More challenge. I will make you a t-shirt that says more challenge, please. <laughs> Go, that's it, Kate. Now open the back of the knees and be light, be really light on those feet. Can you go a little bit more forwards to the wall, almost crown of the head to the wall? That's it. Great stuff, Caroline. This is coming much faster and easier than the chair. Now lower your torso a little bit more. Go more forwards, lower your torso. Great stuff. And then release. I've got the impression that this came up so much easier than the chair one. 
even though we will experience a couple of bruises at either side of the elbows and we will look like drug addicts <laughs> for a couple of days, um, massage your inner elbows, take off the belt. Right, all these actions have contracted the abdomen and the top of the back. Um, so we have not been doing the usual, our classical, um, as I was saying last night, we spend almost a year and three months <laughs> opening the chest, rolling the shoulders back and down. So one day, one week, we've decided to do exactly the opposite. Um, so the strength of the upper back, the strength of the muscles around the shoulder blades make all these wrist balances and asanas where we have to hollow the chest more possible. They are mostly strength. So it's to do with strength. The reason why I not wanting to take merit off the man in the class, <laughs> now that Martin has left. Um, the upper arm muscles in men are stronger. We have stronger hips, etc. The design of the upper arms and upper backs in men um, is different and stronger. But we will catch up. <laughs> we are aiming. <laughs> we, th this is where we're going. So trying to um, open the chest in the, uh, in the, open the back in the opposite way that we normally do, will strengthen the, the joints of the shoulders and the um, uh, shoulder blade muscles, etc. We will now open the chest, of course, we have to open the chest. We'll do um, um, Savangasana, because we have strengthened the upper arms and upper back so much today, I am really tempted. I, I said that to Caroline earlier today when she was um, attempted to do the hands, headstand and incidentally did near a lumbar. <laughs> so let me show you from the side, but of course, again, you will have, or you, if you choose to, you will have the wall. Kate, you can do Setubanda with a bolster and a couple of bricks. Um, this is the way we're going to approach near lumbar. So I have, uh, let me do it this way, just in case I fall onto the flowers. And I'm placing the blanket on top. So I have the form, the four foam pads, the blanket and the two bricks. You can also put the sticky mat on top. Um, the way I'm going down, is the usual. So I have got my shoulders and a very large part of my neck supported here. We will go into Halasana. If you cannot reach Halasana, feet to the floor, you will have a chair. Or if you're doing this against the wall, you will have to bend and put the shins against the wall. Because if you're working with the wall, I want your crown to be against it, okay? So if you're doing this in the middle of the room, you can come to Halasana normally or Halasana with a chair. Otherwise, if you are using the wall, you will be doing child's pose upside down. And then from here, you will be able to bring, actually, we will stay here for a moment, Push your hands down because we have been working on the upper arm muscles, keeping the hands um, flat down on the floor, come up into uh, Savangasana 2. And some of us then will have the arms like a um, right angle, goal post, lifting again from the center of the back. And last of all, we'll take the arms over the head, Last of all, those of you who can, will take the arms up. Whoops, up to the thighs. Of course, if you want to have the wall there, 
your feet will be touching the wall and you can do all these things, climbing up the wall, bringing the buttocks forward and um, the thighs back. Um, you can also hold on to the back as for, for the classical version. But because we have warmed up the shoulders and the upper arm so much, I'm sure you will be able to hold your legs up with no support today. So choose whichever version of these shoulder stand you want to do, and then we will take it from there. You can, as I said, do all these equipment really near the wall so your head is touching the wall as you go up. And then for the halasana, you will have your two shins on the ground. That's it. Kate, if you want, you can bring your arms up and, and push the wall away, up over your head, exactly. Rosanna, can I just ask you, when you went into halasana, did you just have your arms out? Kind of yeah. You can grip the hold, uh, grip hold of the mat, or right. okay. yeah, or interlace your fingers. Anything that will help you move the chest up and the arms away from the chest. Fine, thanks. Let's see, Janine. Can you come into halasana to lift? A little bit more. Yes, there you go. There you go. Now, squeeze your elbows in and push the flesh of the back away from the shoulders. That's it. That's it. That's it. Squeeze your elbows in, everybody. Squeeze your elbows in. That's great, Sue. Now take your thighs back and your buttocks to the nose. Buttocks to your nose. And that's great. Lift the sides of the body. That's great, Caroline. That's very good alignment. We can, and Sarah too. Sarah, I can see from this angle how you're digging in the, um, the spine. There you are, Chris. You can open your legs wider, Chris, and see if you can take them down lower. Emma, can you lift one leg at a time and keep the arms there exactly where they are? And now lift the chest, chest to chin. You're there. Can you see how it pays off all the, the arm work that we've been doing? I'm not going to speak anymore so you can focus on your own bodies. Curse, are you okay? That's it, Chris. You're there, Karen. Thighs back. If you feel that you are choking, lift the chin a little. If you want, Chris, from there, you can lower one leg and keep the top leg up. And lower one leg over, over towards Anne. Yes. Grip the abdomen though. Those of you who have been there for a long time, Sarah, that looks amazing. Those of you who have been there for a long time, bring the legs back to Halasana or support your back to come down. Well done, Anne, I saw that. Roll yourselves back.
stay in the comfortable position that will help you open the chest. When you have recovered, roll over onto the right hand side, move the props away and we'll get ready for the next action. The next action will simply be Verbajasana. For those of us who have more flexibility in the legs, if you want to do Verbajasana too, that will be um, leg in lotus pose and the other leg in Virasana. So let me show you. I'll remove the props. I'm sitting with my, um, going to the right first, sorry. So the right leg will be in uh, Padmasana. So on top of the left leg. This other leg is in Virasana. So the foot is outside my buttock. I'm not sitting on my buttock. This is for those of us who have the flexibility and then you will go and try and catch that foot with the opposite hand. When you have caught, you will turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and turn. You can also use a belt to catch the foot. This is if you have the flexibility to go into Padmasana. I'm not going to go into Padmasana details today. Uh, there is one whole class that I want to do only on Lotus. Um, but we're not going to do that today. So if you have difficulty reaching that foot, you can use a belt and catch and turn. The, if this is not possible for us, leg below as we normally do. So for some of us that will misalign the hips, in which case we take a brick, sit with the brick under the right buttock to begin with. So arch of the right being the support of the ankle of the left. Bikers, you need to do Shavasana, yeah? At some point. Um, so the um, bottom leg is the support for the top leg or the left leg will be the support for the right and then we'll be able to take the knee into Padmasana. That's it. So Karen, you're there. Those of us who are in Padmasana, you will be catching the right foot with the right hand. And of course you will not need that, um, the prop. So you will be catching the right foot from behind with your right hand. Your torso is already twisting to the right. The rest of us, uh, we will be twisting to the right anyway. Uh, so, and you're twisting to the bent knee, yes. Twisting to the right and lift your chest. Catch your right knee with your left hand. Catch your right knee with your left hand. And then if you are in Lotus, you can certainly help that leg go down by pushing it. Turn, turn, turn. If you are in Varaba Jasana 1, you have, <coughs> sorry, a brick under your right buttock <coughs> and you're turning, your right hand can go behind you and catch your leggings. There's no foot there, but you, have, you can catch your garment and carry on turning to the right. Open your chest, open your chest, lift it up and carry on turning. Turn some more. Turn to the right, sit your left sitting bone more. Sit your left sitting bone down. That's it. Now turn your head and look over the right. Lovely. 
Lift the chin a little bit more, Emma. Come back to the center with your head and chest. Try not to collapse the chest. And now we'll release. If you had height for your buttocks, release. And now come to Dandasana, only just to swing to the other side. So if you are doing Verbajasana 1, the left leg will be at the bottom. And you can have a brick or a blanket for your left buttock only. If you're doing the Padmasana version, your left leg will be on top. You have to swing, oops, swing the um, left hand <laughs> behind your back and reach for the big toe. If you cannot reach, get a belt. Take the belt behind you and then turn your body to the left, opening the two shoulders. Open the shoulders, lift the chest more. If you have the leg in Varabhajasana 1, turn, lift the chest, sit the right sitting bone down, lift the chest. Lift the abdomen, open across the shoulders. Janine, are you okay? Is it uncomfortable? Yeah. There you go. Lift the chin, look over the left shoulder. And then when you're ready, come back to the center, release your legs. And if you were using a belt, take the belt handy, separate the two legs. Just a little bit, almost um, a little wider than hip width apart. And then we will extend the arms up above the head, catching the belt, trying to release the thighs down and grip the feet with, I mean, uh, turn the belt around the, the feet to take the outer edges of the feet out into the belt, pushing it, lifting the chest. So what I want in this position is to create an openness, for the chest, create an openness across the collarbones and then lift the torso. We are extending from the armpits to the elbows, which means that the hands may walk a little bit closer to the feet. And then we're extending from the armpits down to the waist which means the torso will, lo it will grow taller, longer. And then release, come back to center. And from here, before we do the full Shavasana, I would like for all of us to have a bolster. If you don't have a bolster handy, you can do this with uh, two foam pads and a blanket. A bolster uh, with If you can bear to do Virasana, you will be in Virasana. Virasana is this pose where I am here, sitting on my um, heel. So this is the asana I would like us to do. If this is not possible, you will simply straighten the legs forward. Straightening the legs forward will just create an extension of the full limb, as opposed to when we are sitting here, with the two legs at either side of my buttock, I will stretch the thigh much more strongly. And then I want to take my torso, so my waist and top of the back are supported by the bolster. If the head doesn't reach the floor because there's tension in the neck, etc., you can have a foam pad 
or two foam pads. Kate, you can have a foam pad here as well. If you can reach the, the Virasana version, that's fine. Otherwise, you can extend only one leg at a time or the two legs, and there you stay. Lengthening the legs away, lengthening the head in the opposite direction. And that will bring our torso back to normal, back to the opening action. That's it. Now, uh, if you are in Virasana, try to bring the thighs together. Emma, are your buttocks on the floor? I'm just wondering because of, yeah, great. Because of the um, uh, angle. So I want the bolster right across your waist and dorsal spine. Lengthen the thighs from the root to the knees and beyond. And then so pitch for if you can lift your arms over your head and can you go and touch the radiator? Uh, there you go. Come back up when you're ready. Bring in first the head, then push the elbows onto the bolster and then lift yourselves up really gently. Extend the back of the knees. If you have been in Virasana, you can turn around and basically do this action like a dog or a cat stretching one leg at a time. If you have been in Virasana, and then you can lie flat in Shavasana or have a bolster for the back of the knees, Whatever position will feel more comfortable for you now, go ahead and do it. Take um, layers on if you need them. Lengthen the base of the skull. Open the shoulders, open the armpits. Extend from armpits to elbows. Extend from armpits to the waist. Really spread yourselves well into the support. You want to have or to take as much space as you can across the mat, across um, the floor. Relax the jaw, bring the tongue down, breathe in and out evenly. And when we started the class, I was asking you to switch off the muscles that connect the shoulder and the neck. So, do that one more time. Go back to that feeling of flicking a switch and then switch off your trapezius.
Inhale and exhale evenly. Hopefully through the nose. If you need to use your mouth, use the mouth and the nose. When you're ready, bring one leg at a time up towards the chest and bring one arm at a time to hug your shins. And once you're hugging your shins or from the back of the thighs, Roll a little bit from side to side, just giving yourselves a nice massage to release any tension that may still be there around the lumbar spine. And then roll on to the right and come up to a sitting position, bringing the head up last. Bring the hands to the chest and bow. Thanking your body and mind for being healthy enough to allow us to do this yoga session today. And thank the teachers before us who showed us how to do it 